Greetings YouTube. Let me pose a question to you. Have you ever sat down to record a YouTube video only to discover that your mic sounds like absolute crap like mine does right now? So you sit there and you think that the only way to fix this is to spend a whole lot of money on either a really nice mic or some expensive fancy software. Well what if I told you that you can take your mic from sounding like this to sounding like this all without spending a single cent and using the hardware that you already have and um, not only not only is it free um, but it's done in real time so you don't have to go back and remove the the static and background noise later it's doing it as you're recording so in order to do this we're going to need to download several pieces of software. All of this software is free. Um, and yeah, so uh, the first place you're going to need to go is to kxstudio.linuxaudio.org. This is a Windows tutorial, um, but this, this company just happens to make a Linux distribution and some of the software for that distribution is also available for Windows. So we're going to go to Software, Applications, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to near the bottom of this list, the next to last item. Carla, this is the software that we need to install from this website. Go ahead and click there, scroll down to near the bottom again, and download the, uh, download the version that's for your Windows version, either 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm not going to download and install the software in this tutorial because A, I've already done it, and B, I trust that anybody watching this video um, looking to do this kind of thing knows how to install software on their own. Um, so once we've got this, now we're going to go to the next website. This website is www.reaper.fm slash replugs, R-E-A plugs. Once again, scroll down, download the version that corresponds to your version of Windows. And this is a package with multiple different plugins for Carla, the other software that we just downloaded. Now, we don't need all of these. We're only going to need this one right here, Reefer, to do what I'm showing you today. Um, but it's a, it's a decent package of plugins. You may find use in some of the other plugins. I know I use a few of them myself, although not all of them. Um, so yeah, go ahead and download and install this software. Once you have this, we need to go to this web page and download a couple different pieces of software, two to three pieces, depending on your needs. So we go to www.vb-audio.com, and then we're going to go here to Audio Apps. Once we're here, the Virtual Audio Cable should be the first tab that comes up, and this is one of the pieces that we're going to need to download. So go ahead and download this. Um, like I said earlier, all of this software is free but you can donate to the developers. With this particular piece of software, VB Cable Virtual Audio Device, it al the free version allows you to install one virtual audio cable, and then if you donate to them, you get, up, you get two more virtual audio cables. Now, if you need two cables for your, um, for your production setup, that's okay, we can get you a second one for free. Just scroll down further, down to this VB Audio Hi-Fi Cable section, and download this. Download and install this, Hi-Fi Cable and ASIO Bridge. This will give you a second cable, a Hi-Fi Cable, um, that you will be able to use should you need it. Once we've got those, we're going to go over to Banana. And you're going to download and install Voice Meter Banana. This is basically just a mixing board that we're going to plug our mic and our virtual cables and our desktop audio and everything else is just going to be plugged into this. So go ahead and download and install that. Now, for those of you who are interested in a little more, uh, there will be a small bonus tutorial which will show you how to take your voice from this to something, something like, like this, this if you desire, desire or something completely different. Um, this is just a way to change what your voice sounds like. 
So back to my original voice, my regular voice. So if you're interested in that, the next piece of software you're going to need to download is um, this, Carovi. To get it, you go to www.kvraudio.com slash product slash Carovi dash buy dash G200KG. Now this particular plugin is actually an auto-tune plugin, but uh, due, due to the nature of it, 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 it will allow you to change the quality and tone of your voice and will actually allow you to output up to two, um, two voices that have been modified and you can also uh, put your regular voice through it as well. So um, so you can you can have it output uh, three technically, although one of them won't be processed at all. So go ahead and download and install this if you need it. Now, if you'll excuse me for a second, let me change my view, and we will close this out. So now we need to open up Voice Meter Banana, and that's what this is. Oops. Um, didn't mean to do that. So, to set this up, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to this hardware input one, click here where it says select input device, and choose your microphone. You will probably see multiple versions of your microphone. Uh, a WDM, maybe a KS, maybe an MME. Choose the WDM version. It's the best version to use in Windows. It has the lowest latency and the best audio quality. And so once you've once you've chosen that, um, all right. I guess I should explain what all of this is. So here in Voice Meter, you are given five inputs and five outputs. This column is input 1, input 2, input 3, this is 4, and this is 5. These three are hardware inputs. You have to actually connect a device into them. So my microphone, one of the virtual cables that we've, we've gotten, um, some other audio device that is installed on your computer. These virtual inputs are a little different. Instead of needing to plug something into them, instead, these create audio devices in your uh, playback and recording devices. So if we scroll down here, you can see that we've got the voice meter input, voice meter aux input, and the same over on recording. We've got an aux output and an output. Okay, so that, that takes care of the inputs. The outputs are completely independent of your inputs. So input 1 doesn't automatically feed to output 1. Instead, the way you control where your inputs are being outputted is via these buttons right here. If the button is highlighted, it is outputting to that output. So here you can see A2 and B2 are highlighted. If you look over here, a2 and B2 are both getting the signal from my mic. So as you can see here, these are A1, 2, 3, B1, B2. The, the three hardware inputs, the A's, have to be chosen from up here. So as you can see, A1 is my headset. A2 is another virtual audio cable, which is been set up as my default mic or my default input device for the system. So all of my software is actually pulling um, its input from here and not from my mic. Um, and then this is just my my TV speakers. Um, if you notice here, I have well here. Okay, there is no input device feeding into this yet I'm, my mic is still causing this meter to, to bounce around. I'll show you why, and, or I'll show you how I did that, and I'll also explain why in a little bit later in this tutorial. Um, this right here 
in, in case you're curious, the Hi-Fi cable, I've actually got this input set up so that all of my communications, uh, all the output from my communication software, so anytime anybody speaks to me on Skype or Vent or TeamSpeak or Discord or any of that, it comes through here. And that way, I can, <clears throat> if, if I'm recording a video but I'm also connected to something, I can decide whether or not I want the audio from that program to go into my recording by using these, uh, by, by choosing which outputs it actually goes to. Okay, so once you have all of this set up the way that you want it, next we have to go to Menu and go down to System Settings. Now down here in the System Settings, we're going to go down to Patch Insert. Now, these four won't be lit up like they are here on yours. All of yours will look like this. You'll need to left-click on the two, the left and right channels for the input that your mic is connected to. So mine is connected to input one. So input one, I've got my left and right channel selected. Um, I also have these selected for my second input and that's part of how my mic is being used in both of these input devices. So we'll go ahead and close that out and shut this down. Or right, we'll minimize it for now. So next we're going to open up Carla. When you open up Carla, you're not going to see any of this. This, you'll, this will be just a completely blank screen in this area. Um, and if you if you go over to Patch Bay, it won't look like this either. All of this stuff in the middle won't be there, and these two bits on the side will look significantly different if they're there at all. I can't remember off the top of my head if they will be there. These two bits are the interface for uh, Voice Meter Banana. This is how we're sending audio signals from Voice Meter into Carla to be processed by whatever whatever effects that we have in here and then sent back out into voice meter. Um, also keep in mind when you're doing this it's um, it, it's kind of important to know that when you when you send audio through this any anytime any channel that you want access to in here any of these channels have to be highlighted here. So if I also want to be able to to mess around with my third hardware input, I need to highlight I need to highlight these two. And once they're sent in here, the signal actually goes through this this processing loop before it goes through the effects on this part of the mixer. So if I were to change like the compressor or the gate or change any of the stuff in here, like I'm doing right now, you see you can do all kinds of weird things. Um, you right click, you can, you can do all kinds of weird things in here too by moving this around. Double click to reset. Um, and then this will let you place, put the audio in different places. Um, but so this affects loop happens before this stuff. So just keep that in mind when you're setting up your effects loops. Okay, so now in order to get this set up so that we can actually access Voice Meter Banana, we have to go up to Settings and go to Configure Carla. You're going to go down into Engine, and if this audio driver isn't already set to ASIO, go ahead and set it to ASIO. Then you're going to click this button. I'm going, excuse me, as I click this button, because once I do, it's going to screw up my settings and my mic is going to sound terrible again. So just bear with me for a moment while I do that. So once we have this open, you're going to select Voice Meter Insert Virtual ASIO. Click OK. Um, you're going to need to restart Carla for this to take effect, but before you do that, let's go down to Paths, switch this down to VST, and then you're going to add the paths for 
the locations where you installed the Reaper plugins and the Caro V plugin if you decided to install that as well. This is just so that Carla knows where the plugins are located so that it can um, it can list them for you and load them for you as well. So please excuse me for a moment while I um, while I fix my audio. And we're back. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you launch Carla, you're going to want to launch it as an administrator. Um, some some plugins won't they won't even load if you're not um, if you're not running it as an administrator. So just always make sure to do that. So now that <clears throat> now that Carla is set up properly, you should see um, these two bits um, in the patch bay tab. So now we need to add our reefer plugin. So just go up to plugins and add. Um, and in this window, you probably won't see much of anything in this list. That's because it hasn't actually scanned for the plugins yet. So you go to refresh. And when this window pops up, select the VST checkbox. Now if you've if you've gone around online and downloaded a bunch of other plugins that you want to mess around with, make sure that you have the appropriate types selected for those as well. Um, so once once you have all of this selected, just hit start and it'll go through and locate all of your plugins and import them into this list back here. I'm not going to do that because it'll take a long time for me because I have a ton of plugins installed. Um, but um, once once you've done that and it finishes, you'll go ahead and have to hit close on this window, and then you'll have a list of all your plugins here. If you've got a lot and you can't find the one you're looking for, just type in up in this text box up, box up here, refer, and it'll bring you to what you need. So just double click on one, and bam, we've got our we've got our refer plugin. Now all you've got to do is take from the left click on the channel here, click and drag to the input on the plugin, and then you do it again for the second. So um, for for all of these, the the way this works is the first two are channel or the first two are the first hardware input, the next two are the second, the next two are the third, and then after that the next eight belong to um belong to the um the first virtual device and the next eight belong to the auxiliary virtual device and the way that I've got my mic from input 1 feeding into both input 1 and 2 is here in this gate plugin if i um this this box and this box are actually both one plugin just split if i if i right click and select join they they come back together into um into one box but i split them up just to make uh make this easier to read So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of uh, this because I've already got Reefer here. But once you have yours plugged in, so you, you plug into the inputs, and then from the outputs, you just click and drag over to the playbacks, and it's the same on this side. One and two are for input one, three and four are for input two, etc. So once you've got that set up, then double click on your reefer plugin and that'll bring up this window. Now as you can see while I'm talking, this yellow line dances around to show the waveform for my voice. Um, but if you notice when I stop speaking, there's still that brown line that's dancing around. That brown line is all of the static and background noise that is currently being cut out of the signal. This red line is 
represents all of the frequencies that Reefer is supposed to cut out. So the way you set up this is you go to Mode and change this to Subtract. It should be on EQ initially, if I remember correctly. So once it's set to, to Subtract, um, you just go over to this checkbox, be perfectly quiet, and then check the box. And if you noticed, um, once I once I clicked the checkbox, the red line dropped to to the bottom, and then started rising to meet the noise that was going on. Once you see no more yellow while you're being quiet, it's okay to go ahead and uncheck the box, and then it's set. At this point, your background noise is being canceled out. You're you're good to go. So if if you want to go further and start um, changing your voice and all that fun stuff, and you've installed Caravi, um, you can you can set it up, put it in your loop somewhere, however you want to put it in there. Um, as as you can see, I've got from the gate, I've got one that goes up into into this graphic equalizer, and then out and in, back into my input one um, and then a secondary loop that goes through a whole bunch of other effects and eventually makes its way to my second input um, and this is just so that I can easily switch back and forth between my regular voice and my processed voice but so once you've got Carol hooked in you just double click on it and this will open up this um, and then you can just you can just play around with these different knobs. The this this bypass knob will control your regular voice. So if you turn this all the way down, you won't hear your regular voice at all. You will only hear the um, the modified voices. And if you if you turn it all the way up, you'll be able to hear your voice. So you can you can use these uh, volume knobs to kind of balance the different voices, um, however you want to have them set up. Um, and then if you excuse me for a moment while I um, switch, switch over, over. So, so if you start if you start playing around with these things, things you'll know that you'll see oops didn't mean to do that Um, you'll you'll see that you start to change the way your voice sounds, and there's like you can do all kinds of messing around with them and make your voice sound like a chipmunk, or or you know do weird things like that. Um. So switch that back. Um. So that's how you do that, and you can. Like I said, you can link from this into another, like a, this This is a reverb processor, and these are some different strange uh, digital effects that I added. Um, a, a lot of these extra boxes are just bypasses so that I can easily switch any particular effect on or off um, just with a quick button press from over here in the rack. I just, you know, you... You switch the bypass off and switch the the effect on, and boom, it's it's good to go. Um, so yeah, um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this tutorial was useful, and please, oh please, for all that is for the love of all that is good and holy, clean cl clean your mic, clean your mic. There, there's. It's super easy to do. It doesn't cost anything, and you, you really have no excuse not to. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.